Welcome everybody to this uh, showcase video of our Nav Suite software from OXTS. Uh, this will be a brief introduction to our complementary software suite, uh, which we call Nav Suite. Um, the software is free to download, no license is required. You can go uh, straight to our website, I'll show at the end where to go uh, onto our support site and download it uh, without a license. And there's some sample data that you can also make use of uh, to play around with. So on the screen now, you can see uh, what we call Nav Start. So it's essentially a list of the applications that are part of Nav Suite. You've got Nav Config, Nav Display, Nav Solve, Nav Graph. And those are the, the applications that I'll be talking about throughout this video. Um, Nav Suite is essentially all the software you need to configure, monitor, uh, process data from OXTS INS devices uh, and analyze data as well. So we'll go through these. So firstly, we'll see Nav Config. So it's in the name. What it does is configure your INS device. So it sets up uh, the interfaces and it's going to tell you uh, or tell the device exactly how it's mounted on a vehicle uh, and connected to other devices, things like this. So this will be the starting application. You would connect your INS uh, by Ethernet to your PC and open nav config. That would be the first step. Uh, you'll just need to make sure that your PC is on the same IP range as the INS. So that would be 192.168.1 dot uh, the serial number uh, and here you have to put in various measurements so I'll start to show you what these might be so you would start with the hardware setup measurements so that's uh, the orientation of the INS on the vehicle uh, where it's pointing where it is with respect to the axles um, if you're on a land vehicle for example uh, where the antennas are with respect to the INS um, these kinds of measurements so you would do those things first thing and then you would move on to um, other settings such as uh, differential corrections to get um, your centimeter level accuracy uh, you might have a, a lidar scanner uh, if you wanted to set up your pps uh, nmea ptp um, connections things like this uh, all of this can be done in nav config uh, you've also got settings for your environment. Um, so how good are the GNSS setting uh, conditions rather? Uh, you can tell the device and it will uh, change how it reacts to GNSS updates, uh, things like this, all to get the, the uh, maximum accuracy out of your device and to get exactly what you want out of it. So all of this is done in nav config and it's a, a really convenient way of, of doing it all so there are advanced settings as well uh, we won't go into all of these um, but you can change all sorts just in nav config in this in this user interface so that would be the first step uh, and then you would go on to commit the changes um, commit your configuration to the device the device will reset and then it will be waiting for an initialization um, which is an important step in using an OXTS INS device. So initialization uh, is the, uh, the initial heading lock, uh, and that will be uh, something that if you're using a land vehicle, you might monitor in nav display, which I'll go on to in a moment. So nav display, if I remove nav config, is essentially a way of monitoring the device in real time. So you are able to, if I just play this back, so I'm not driving now, uh, I'm just watching some data that I've recorded earlier, um, but this is what you would see in real time. So you would see the uh, the number of satellites, the, the speed, the uh, heading pitch roll, the heading accuracy, pitch accuracy, roll accuracy, all, all these things. Uh, and this is entirely uh, configurable for the user. So I could add any number of measurements um, in any number of different displays. So if there's a certain uh, parameter measurement that you want to keep an eye on, you can do that and you can do it in a number of different ways, such as a, a graph or a, a digital um, 
display anything really that you can think of. Um, if I just show you a few of the options that you've got, you can add uh, any one of these measurements. You can see how many there are, uh, several hundred different things um, that you might want to monitor, just so you know that you've got absolutely everything you need to uh, to know that your survey is going well. So that's that's nav display, and you would use this um, for many many things. You can use this for typically you might use this if you're doing a warm up. So when you first use your uh, device after using nav config, you do the initialization, which would be um, if you're doing a dynamic initialization, you drive in a straight line, uh, and it, this nav display would tell you when the device is initialized, uh, and then you would do a warm up. So one to three minute warm up, perhaps if you're using the XNav 650, and you would use this. Looking at these accuracies here, you might use these to gauge when the warm up is complete. So, for example, this data is for a Survey Plus, and you can look on the data sheet for the specification. Uh, it's one centimeter accurate, and you can see uh, the device is reporting about eight millimeters north accuracy, six millimeters east accuracy. Um, the heading accuracy specification is 0.01, uh, uh, 0 0.1 rather, uh, and you can see that it's at 0 uh, 0.06 essentially at, at the moment. So you would know that after you've done your warm up, that you are getting exactly what you what you want. So then you would go after you've collected your data. Um, so the device is always logging data automatically. So it's got an internal storage, 32 gigabytes, and as soon as you uh, turn it on, it will be logging data continuously. And simply, when you're done, at the end of your survey, you retrieve the data off the device. So I've got a screenshot here of what you would do. You would simply um, set up an FTP connection. So there'd be, uh, you could go into File Explorer, FileZilla, whatever it might be, uh, set up an FTP connection to your uh, IP address. And you'll see all the files that are stored on the device, uh, and you'll have a list of all the RD files that are stored on the device. If you're using a LiDAR and you're logging data onto the device as well, which you can do for, say, a VLP16 LiDAR, you'll also have your list of LCOM files, which will be logging also automatically as soon as the device is on and the devices are connected. Um, so after you've done your survey, you can retrieve these straight off the device via an Ethernet connection, uh, and then you can you're ready to process. So to process, you would be using nav solve. So we've gone from nav config before your survey, nav display during your survey, and then you would move on to nav solve. So this is um, you might guess it's going to process that data. So what we've downloaded from the device is a .rd file, which is a raw data file, and we need to process that into a .ncom file. So the ncom file is our file format. It's got all the, the data that you, you saw on nav display. All of that is uh, visible in the ncom file format uh, and, and retrievable easily. So what we're going to do is, is essentially process that, so you can you can view the the file, see a few different parameters in it, but the processing is really as simple as pressing a button. If you've got your configuration is all correct um, from nav config, um, and you've you've added your base stations, which you can do very easily simply by directing your um, simply by directing NavSolve to the uh, folder that you might have the base station Rhinex files in, and then you would simply select your base stations and click process, and that would be it. So you do have a chance also to change your configuration before processing, in post-processing. So if you've made a mistake in your configuration uh, with your measurements, for example, you don't have to go out and uh, do it all again. You can review the config. Uh, this will open up nav config. You can modify the configuration and just change those measurements, and that will be used 
in the processing. So if I just show you, you could change, for example, you realize this was actually facing the other way, you could just change that. Navconfig also has an option for an improved configuration. So after, so, so what the device will be doing in real time is constantly improving the parameters that you've put in. So you might measure, say, the antenna to be one meter away from the INS, but it might actually be 1.02 meters from the INS. Uh, and when you want to get the, the centimeter level accuracy in your survey, um, obviously uh, you need to get that more precise, but the INS is going to be doing that automatically. So typically you would only need to measure, say to the nearest 10 centimeters, and then the INS will do that. As you do the warm up, it's figuring out exactly what the configuration is. And using this improve configuration button, what that does is simply save those improved measurements to the device. So it thinks it's got those improved measurements instead of the ones that you put in initially. Uh, and then after doing that, you can process your data. You've got a few options, uh, which I won't go into uh, much detail on, but it, it really is that simple. So after using NavSolve, you can then use NavGraph. So NavGraph would be software for analyzing your data. And what you would do is open your NCOM file in NavGraph, and it would simply display uh, different measurements and different parameters uh, of your choosing. Um, and you have some options for exporting to different data types and, and things like this. So, so again, you, you have these, um, many different measurements and parameters that the device is always monitoring. So you've got your latitude, longitude, you've got your position accuracies, your pitch accuracies. All these things can be measured throughout the survey. Uh, and what you can see on the screen here now is a position accuracy for this survey. So you can see we've, we've driven this, this route here. Um, and what you can see are position accuracies for that same data that I showed you in nav display. So the green is a altitude accuracy. You can see that's a bit below two centimeters for the whole survey. Um, and you've also got the uh, position accuracy uh, east, I think this is, in red. And that's about seven millimeters, six or seven millimeters uh, throughout the whole survey, uh, except of course for these spikes. So something that you might want to do is try to understand exactly what happened at, at different points in the survey. So you can drag a cursor and you can see, okay, so this, this peak here happened when I was at this point in the survey. And I happen to know that there was a forest here. So what's happened is I've lost satellite signals and I've been relying on the IMU. And you can see that there's a spike in the data until I get the, the GNSS coverage back. So something that you can do is export to different um, file types. You've got a .kml, uh, you've got a CSV, uh, and you can really have an, you can export to a CSV uh, any of the data that you've collected. So you could um, modify this table. You can see you can configure the table, choose your different measurements, choose the units. Um, you can do the same with the graph, configure the graph, um, all different measurements um whatever you might want to to put on there and then you can export these so you can analyze this data so for example you might export to a, a kml file I, I i didn't know that was a forest so i'm going to have a look at some satellite imagery so i i saw that the peak in the data was here and you can see that was indeed a forest that we we drove through there before surveying this town here so that is uh, nav suite in a nutshell. I didn't go into any detail on what you can do, but you can see how the suite of software takes you from setup uh, to analyzing your data. Uh, we have another application, software application, which is not part of nav suite, which is called OXTS GeoReferencer. This is for LIDAR serving. It's a very useful application uh, for that. Uh, but it's not part of uh, NavSuite. NavSuite is for our navigation data, and it's completely free. 
um, you can go onto our website. So I can show you that. Now you can see on our website, you can go very simply to the technical support site, to software, nav suite, and here you can download and you'll be able to get some sample data on there as well. Um, this same data, which you'll be able to uh, configure, uh, view, process, uh, and then analyze all by yourself. So you can get a good feel for this uh, for the software. So uh, thank you for watching, and I I hope you enjoy using NavSuite.